So first, I want to apologize for not being able to connect uh, visually to the conference. Unfortunately, I had to choose between having a good presentation or showing my face, and I chose the first. Okay, so um, uh, my name is Amir Shah Maradi. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Physics and Data Science program at the University of, at the University of Texas at Arlington. Um, I'm going to talk about some of the recent efforts that uh, we have put together to develop a uh, parallel Monte Carlo for uh, library purely in Fortran. Um, my computational data science lab does research in a lot of uh, uh, different topics um, in a wide variety of disciplines from high energy astrophysics to molecular dynamic simulations, uh, including bioinformatics and biophysics problems to uh, biomedical uh, image segmentation to traffic engineering enabled by deep learning. And also uh, a big part of my group does uh, software development, uh, one of which is the package that I'm going to talk about. Uh, and that's about stochastic sampling and optimization and integration of mathematical objective functions. But before I'm going into the details of the package, I want to give the audience a very broad review of uh, what the scientific inference is about. So I'm going to begin with a very simple question. How do we make a scientific inference? Here is a very elementary depiction of the scientific method. On the left hand side, we have the reality in which natural phenomena occur. On the right hand side, we have the mathematical abstraction. Hopefully you see my uh, mouse pointer. If you don't, let me know. Um, so on the right hand side, we have the mathematical abstraction and then we collect the observational data in this abstract um, domain. And then uh, we form a hypothesis or model um, and construct the model, calibrate it, validate it, and finally we make a prediction in a process known as public problem and compare the results with natural phenomena. Again, more specifically, we could represent this entire workflow in a hierarchical pyramid, uh, the right face of which is uh, data, represents data, the left face of it represents scenario or model, and the rear side is reality, which we never know because of the obfuscations and contamination with errors and um, uh, uh, noise. And then each level in this diagram, uh, in this uh, pyramid, represents one stage in the modeling process. So the, the bottom part is the calibration scenario and calibration data. We combine the two and then uh, we validate this constructed model uh, via validation data and then we make a prediction uh, under the prediction model and uh, uh, we basically predict the quantity of interest in our problem. Okay. So, um, the major challenge in all scientific interest problems from deep learning, machine learning, uh, weather forecasting, bridge construction, everything boils down to a set of simple tasks. Uh, I mean, in, in text, not really in practice. Um, first of all, we have to define a mathematical objective function that represents how good each solution to the problem is. And then we have to optimize this objective function, which is called parameter tuning, or sample this objective function, which is called uncertainty quantification, or integrate this function, which is called typically uh, model selection. Now, um, here is a, it's a very simple illustration of a scientific inference problem. So let's say we have this collected this data set. It resembles a Gaussian, so we're going to form a hypothesis that this data comes from a normal distribution. And uh, we were hoping that a normal distribution would be a good fit. So we construct a likelihood uh, function, which represents our objective function in this, in this particular problem. The details are not important, but the bottom line is that this objective function depends on two parameters of the model, the variance and the mean. And then our goal is to find the best fit mean and variance of this problem. So here is an illustration of this objective function in two dimensions, uh, variance and the mean. And then our goal is to optimize this function to find the maximum or sample this function to quantify the uncertainty in our problem or integrated to find out how good this Gaussian model is, uh, uh, how good fit, uh, uh, good of a fit is this Gaussian model to our problem, to our data set. Okay. So, uh, and finally, once we get the parameters, we can do a goodness of fit test and so on. Right. So there are a wide range of uh, algorithms that exist in the literature for uh, optimization. In particular, the most popular ones that you might have heard are genetic algorithms and stochastic gradient descent. And a subset of these optimization techniques also perform sampling for us. Those are called Monte Carlo and Poison Monte Carlo. And again, a subset of these methods uh, do even more, can integrate functions for us, calculate the normalization constants of functions. And those are parallel tempering and nested sampling are the two prominent ones that exist right now. 
here is a hierarchical diagram representing all of these methods, deterministic versus stochastic and so on. I'm not gonna discuss all of them. I'm just gonna focus on one specific algorithm that is fully implemented and fully functional in our package, Markov chain Monte Carlo technique, and some other ones that are currently being implemented. So if you look at the history of MCNC and Monte Carlo methods, you see three major figures behind these techniques. Um, the physicist Enrico Fermi, um, mathematician Olam, and then John von Neumann, uh, who was a chemist and mathematician. And this is the first computer, uh, analog computer, that Fermi constructed for his neutron transport simulations at Los Alamos National Laboratory. And this is the first digital computer with which they performed uh, Monte Carlo simulations. Now, a few of the years later, around 1953, about the time where Fortran was uh, being um, invented for the first time as a high-level language, um, these gentlemen and um, these ladies together proposed a method to sample objective functions called Metropolis Hastings Markov chain Monte Carlo technique. And this technique was later um, popularized and expanded uh, and um, introduced to the statistical community. And now this Markov chain Monte Carlo technique has become one of the most uh, important algorithms that exist in computer science and essentially all fields that involve in theorems. So the idea behind a, um, a Monte Carlo simulation, Markov chain Monte Carlo simulation is very simple. You, uh, you set up a random worker in your space and this random worker starts going around your domain and starts sampling each, each point in the domain of your objective function proportional to the height of that point uh, uh, specified by the objective function. So if you give it enough time, it's gonna explore everywhere. But there are problems right away you can see. For example, if the step size is too small, then you would not be able to sample efficiently this space. Whereas if you make the step sizes too big, um, good. You approach um, your objective function, you sample very nicely. But again, there are hidden problems that are not shown here. For example, your efficiency goes extremely low. So if I wanted to compare these two, um, you see the smaller step size gives you a really high efficiency and uh, but at the same time, very large correlation, autocorrelation in your chain. Uh, and this is bad, uh, this is good. But at the same time, if you increase the step size, um, the efficiency goes down, which is bad, and uh, autocorrelation goes down, which is great. So this is where Monte Carlo methods become really an art. And uh, based on experience. And uh, the goal is to uh, basically be able to find and automate this process of making a good guess for your problem so that the user does not need to worry about all the details of MCMC method. They just provide the objective function and the algorithm successfully samples that objective function for you. So there are lots of packages already written for many of these Monte Carlo techniques. Some of them are listed here. Uh, there are um, major advantages and caveats with each one of these packages. I don't want to mention um, the weaknesses of each one, but typically the problems that I have identified with existing packages, and that was one of the major uh, driving forces behind developing this package, was that some of them are serial, some others are parallel, some of them are really hard to work with. They have lots of dependencies on other packages in particular, if you go to the world of C++ and C uh, packages. Um, some of them are only available in a specific language. So if you want to move on to another language, you don't have access to that package anymore and so on. So we decided to develop uh, a package with an emphasis on uh, creating code that is parallel and uh, uh, running simulations that are inherently and natively parallel. And um, it's not only me alone. Uh, um, um, I have had several students uh, who have worked on this project and a colleague, um, a physicist uh, who has been consistently working with me on this project over the past years. Um, now, uh, to give you a brief uh, review of this package, uh, it's of course open source. It's currently comprised of about 130,000 lines of code. Effectively, I think uh, removing the new lines and so on is probably around 100K lines. Uh, half of it is in Fortran, 30% in MATLAB, 50% Python, and then 50% C, C, make, uh, shell and batch and other things. And it's a package that addresses some of the major weaknesses of the existing Monte Carlo software with the design philosophies that are listed here. First of all, we wanted to have full automation of all Monte Carlo simulations to the highest level possible to ensure the highest level of user friendliness of the library and minimal time investment requirements for building, running, and post-processing of simulation models. 
Second, we wanted to have interoperability of the core library with as many languages as possible so that everybody in any language can use this package without worrying to, uh, about learning a new package. So the current interfaces that are available is, are in C, C++, Fortran, MATLAB, Python, and there are uh, other uh, languages that are being included currently, like R, Mathematica, Java, and Julia. Uh, we wanted to be uh, to have a package that is high performance and also meticulously low-level implementation, uh, so that we get uh, fast Monte Carlo simulations. We wanted to have native parallelizability in all simulations. We have two-sided and wide-sided MPI query communications while requiring zero parallel coding efforts by the user. So the user doesn't need to code a single line of parallel uh, programming uh, to to run those in parallel. And then, of course, we wanted to have zero dependence on external libraries so that the user doesn't need to install tens of other dependent uh, packages in order to run a simple Monte Carlo simulations. Um, and then uh, um, we wanted to have fully deterministic reprodu reproducibility. And this is back, uh, this is like um, uh, deterministic into the future. So even if your uh, code crashes right now and you restart your simulation, which is quite seamless, you will generate the same results that you would have produced before crashing your software. Uh, we have spent a lot of time on making sure that this is the case. And despite the stochastic nature of the package, it is fully deterministic of the 16 digits of precision, if requested by the user, which is the default case. And also we wanted to have comprehensive reporting and post-processing of all simulation results so that the, re the simulation remains uh, reproducible into the distant future. Okay. So now, why did we choose Fortran? Um, Obviously, it's a reliable, backward compatible language that has been so for decades and hopefully for so many decades to come. Uh, it's high performance as opposed to other high level program languages such as Python and MATLAB. And I have seen this performance difference. It could be up to order of 500 times or, uh, or more sometimes. Uh, we wanted to have an easy high, uh, high level, easy to learn, uh, modularized object oriented programming language as opposed to C and to some extent C++ programming language. Uh, we wanted to have a native support for a scalable parallelism by our open uh, core arrays, and also mature support for all NPI and OpenMP if needed, which is eventually what we included at the end. Um, we wanted to have native support for many frequently needed numerical objects such as arrays, times, types, and functions that are already available in Fortran language by default. Um, and then uh, one of the most amazing features that is, has been really extremely helpful in Fortran uh, is excellent the standardized interoperability features enabling seamless interactions with other programming languages. This has been really crucial in the development of the package. Um, and all of the above um, points um, enable us to develop a package that has one application programming interface or API for access from all programming languages. So the library's kernel routines are all written in pure Fortran standard uh, 2018. And the wrappers are available in C, C++, Fortran, Matlab, Python, um, and the user can use them without any um, significant coding required. And I want to emphasize that much of our work was inspired by the amazing uh, body of work that the Sorcery Institute led by uh, Damian Rosen, I believe, um, uh, has done. Um, uh, and it's uh, the major package that they have um, developed is Open Core Arrays, which is fantastic. And I will show some of the results uh, with Open Core Arrays as well. Uh, and, uh, and there is often, it's often said that good example is worth, uh, is worth a thousand lights of documentation. So I'm just gonna go straight to some uh, examples and show you how you can do this. For example, let's say a Windows system, uh, we want to build a package, um, um, our Monte Carlo simulation package for a, um, a Windows system. What we, what we can do is that we can go to um, tdslab.org, this is our, uh, group website slash PM. That's gonna redirect us to this uh, page for the Paramount library uh, that includes uh, all the documentation, everything. And then you can choose the language that you want um, to code in. For example, you would say you wanna use Fortran, Windows, and then it gives you the option to download pre-built libraries for Windows, which is quite easy. You click on it, let's say you want to uh, use C language, and then you open it. And this package already comes with a uh, fully implemented um, uh, example um, for Monte Carlo simulations and then build a script that will automatically build this uh, 
example for you and run it. But instead of doing this, I want to show how we can uh, build it on the command line to show that even building it on the command line is super fast and easy. So uh, for that, you would probably need to go to uh, the GitHub page for the package. So um, as I said, it's open source, you can clone it. Uh, and then I don't see your uh, screen. Oh, you don't see it. Apologize for that. So I don't know why that happened. Uh, are you sure? Because it says my screen is shared right now. You are this is in presentation. Yes, exactly. Now we so, see. OK, I apologize for that. So let me just quickly tell you what I've been doing. So I went to cdslab.org slash pm, and that's going to redirect you to this page. Uh, if I just press back, I think that's going to redirect us again there. Um, so you go to this website, um, and then you choose the, uh, the build that you want to have on your system on the specific platform that you like. And then it gives you two options. You can either use the Pribble Camel libraries um, that are available on GitHub. You can just, just click on the, on the specific language that you want to use uh, with a specific um, uh, build configuration. And then you open it. And once you extract it on your system, there is a build here. Uh, script that automatically builds this example that is provided along with the library uh, for you. Uh, and it runs it and it does everything for you automatically. So that serves as a template for you to construct your other uh, work if you like. And I'm just going to show you how easy it is to, uh, and also there is also a full instruction here uh, to, uh, to build it locally in your system. So that's what I'm going to do right now. So uh, let's say uh, we have cloned the package from GitHub and we are on the command line. Um, first of all, there is a build script for this purpose. And if you need help, you just type help and uh, you get help about all the flags that you can pass to this library. Um, this is of course a Windows batch script. Uh, so the, the, the command line that you see here is the Intel command uh, line uh, that is provided by default with Intel compilers. Um, I, there is already effort to include also GNU Fortran support on Windows, uh, which is possible. I really, uh, I recently uh, realized that. So now let's say we want to compile this package for Fortran. So all that we need to do is to say install. Uh, we're going to say uh, use uh, build a static library. Um, uh, use memory uh, heap memory uh, for allocations and. Uh, uh, you want to have a build for testing. You could also specify release um, or debug. These are the three build, uh, builds that are supported right now. I'm just gonna specify testing. Um, and then uh, what else is there? Yes, parallelism. So I'm gonna say par, uh, let's say for now we wanna create a serial code. And then the language that I wanna choose is Fortran. That's it. And then it's gonna build a package on our system uh, by default, it assumes that you have, um, I think, I know what the source of error is. If you give me a second, now this is going to work again. Um, so by default, it assumes that you have an Intel compiler already installed on in your system, on your Windows system, and that's how it's going to do it. Once it compiles, it's going to generate uh, it's going to take a while, so I'm not going to take our time with that. It's going to generate a bin folder within the clone repository, uh, and it's going to have the build uh, 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 library for you here, along with the examples there. So all that you need to do uh, at that moment is to just call this build script. Let's say you want to run this particular case here, so I'm going to uh, go to this folder, and then I say build, but that it's going to build the example for us and then run the simulation on one process because this is built for serial simulations, right? Now, let's say you wanted to run your code um, in, in MATLAB language. Let's say you like to code in MATLAB. All you need to do is to go to the MATLAB page here, um, our MATLAB, and then either download the pre-built library, like the one that is available here, or just, um, to shorten the build, I'm just gonna uh, make a change in the build. Uh, so I'm gonna say install again, go to the root directory, install lang matlab, and then uh, we want to have 
a testing build, let's say, uh, as opposed to release or debug. And then we want to have parallelism. Um, Parallel MPI, okay. And um, I believe that's it. Hopefully, for the flags that you need to specify. If you don't specify, it's going to build for all configurations possible. So you're not going to miss anything. It's just that it's going to build it for everything possible. Now it's compiling the codes. I've shortened the number of files that are compiled here by default. So it's not. It's not compiling the code for use from map of language. And now our library is almost ready to use from the MATLAB programming language. Once you do this, it's gonna create a folder again in the bin folder for you, which contains the MATLAB library that is built for you, along with the examples for serial and parallel simulations. Um, now it's uh, building the MPI version because they specified both for serial and MPI, but I think we are now okay to just show you at least how the serial version can be run. This is a, a, a pre-written, uh, example that comes with the, with the package. So you could just press F5 and it's gonna automatically run this package. It automatically checks for the existence of uh, an MPI library on your system. If it's missing, it will give you directions, uh, sometimes even automatically uh, will install it for you if you need it, uh, the runtime libraries. And um, uh, it runs the simulation for you, that's the end, and it gives you instructions on how to uh, post-process your results. So let's say, for example, we want to read the chain, the resulting chain that has been generated in this output folder now. You don't even need to specify any output timelines. Everything is done automatically. And then it gives you directions on how to visualize the results uh, by providing a list of everything, all the um, uh, graphics that are available. So let's say you want to visualize the sampling that you have done from this, uh, four-dimensional Gaussian function that we have been sampling. Now, it's a long chain by default. It generates a very long chain. Uh, that's why it's taking a little bit of time. And I think the, um, the builds are also complete. So this is basically the set of all points that we have sampled from our Gaussian functions. Uh, this is the objective function value, this column. Uh, and these are the variables versus each other. So sample variable one versus sample variable four, sample variable two versus sample variable three, all of them. And it's just one of the many graphings, uh, uh, plottings that exist currently in the package. I'm not gonna repeat them all for you. I'm just gonna show you, there should be, yes. Uh, there is already examples here. So if you go to MATLAB examples and live scripts, you're gonna find, um, um, already written scripts for you that guide you on how to run simulations. Um, so these are all the uh, example plottings that you can have uh, automatically from this package. Now, let's say you want to run a, a code in MATLAB in parallel, again, doing a parallel sampling. Um, all you need to do is to go, go to the command line and I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna go to CDP, MATLAB, where the exists. Okay, now I'm just gonna call on the command line. Uh, yeah, so I'm just gonna call the MPI exec with three processors. And again, the only thing that you need to make it uh, to change in your code, uh, this is a simple uh, sampling problem. It samples Gaussian function, multivariate normal function. And um, the only thing that you need to change versus uh, a serial code is to add this single line. PMPD, so I'm calling, I'm creating a class of Paramount and then I'm creating an object of uh, paradigm simulation. And then I say, run this paradigm uh, simulation in parallel, MPI enabled, and then uh, run the sampler in three dimensions. And here is my objective function, uh, which is by default should be uh, a logarithm um, uh, of the objective function. So this basically implements multivariate normal distribution in three dimensions. And all that we need to do now is to just call it on the command line. Um, I guess that's it. And probably Windows Firewall is gonna um, uh, give us some delay um, because of the MPI network. Uh, but eventually it's gonna run the code in um, three processors. You could also compile the code for um, 4A Fortran, so you can specify capture here. 
Um, and let's, I think the rest looks good. Yeah. Again, it's going to build it, but it's going to take some time. But eventually, the process is completely the same, exactly the same. There's no difference, and it's going to generate the package for you, and it's going to run automatically an example for you. Um, yeah. So the simulation, the MATLAB simulation is also complete now, almost. Yeah, and then um, now you may ask, what about Python? Uh, Python is probably much more popular than MATLAB. Exact same thing, exact same syntax, again, applies to um, uh, Python language, uh, except just minor differences between the syntax of, syntax of the two languages. The API for the package is the same. So again, you create, um, if I wanted to show you, you just call pip install paramount that will install the package for you on your system. Then you import paramount, uh, and then you can verify if you have the Python library on your system. And if you don't, it may enable you to install it automatically. It may install it automatically for you, the runtime libraries that are missing, depending on the conditions and your platform. And then you just create your objective function. In this case, again, it's a normal distribution, and that's what I'm going to do. So it checks, and this, uh, this NPI library is detected automatically for you. So uh, and I'm going to run this simulation now uh, in Python environment. And it's pretty fast. Um, so the simulation is complete. Now you can perform all the post-processing tasks that I just showed you in, uh, in MATLAB. And you see the syntax is identical to what you get in MATLAB. So this is one of the design goals that we had from the beginning of our uh, of work. Um, to have identical syntax from every language as much as possible. And then you can have uh, the same plotting functionalities and everything uh, from, Python uh, from Python language, similar to uh, like read plots and so on, similar to MATLAB. And then you can also run your code in parallel also in Python. That's also the same thing as we did here. Uh, you could even run the code in parallel inside Jupyter Notebook, as I have done here. All you need to do is to just call the call it on the command line and the way that I'm doing it here right now, just put them, by putting the exclamation mark here. Okay, so um, I mentioned everything uh, for uh, the Windows system. Uh, on Linux and Mac OS, uh, the same thing is again applies. The syntax again is the same, so you just call the build script, uh, or you can go ahead and download the pre built library from. Um, from the uh, uh, website uh, dedicated to this package. Uh, you can download it for any platform that you like, or you can just build it on your system. So I could say, let's say for example, build this for MATLAB uh, in default mode, or let's say now it's in release mode. Um, and yeah. then NPR and none. I'm sorry, did somebody say anything? Yes. Um, could you please wrap it up? Oh yeah, sure, absolutely. Um, so this is basically how the, the package works. Now let me give you a quick um, summary uh, and details about uh, the implementation of the, um, the package. So uh, inherently, uh, the MCMC methods and Monte Carlo methods are sequential. So it's really hard to parallelize Monte Carlo methods. Uh, however, it's possible to use fork join style uh, to parallelize, and that's what we use inside this package. And uh, here is a um, strongest scaling analysis of the resulting code on uh, about uh, 1,100 Xeon Phi processors on uh, Texas Advanced Computing Center. The results are not really that important because the strongest scaling results that you see here are dependent on the type of problem that you're working with. Depending on the problem, we could get better results or worse. What's really important, I think, is the difference between the different implementations of core array and NPI that we get. So for example, with open core arrays, uh, we get apparently much better performance than um, the uh, NPI version. And um, similarly, uh, uh, the Intel and NPI uh, and GNU give us the similar performance. Uh, I think I know some of the reasons why the open core array performs less uh, than the NPI version, and that's because um, Open core, core array is inherently one-sided communication, but the way it's implemented right now, because it was implemented a long time ago, at the time where uh, the core array events were not available, it's, it's really two-sided communication versus one-sided. So I think that's why it, uh, it's uh, less performant. Uh, the code itself 
is a strictly uh, 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 is has a strict semantic compliance with the latest Fortran standard. Um, uh, also, the source code itself um, it has a strict parallelism compliance with the Fortran standard via Flores, as I said. But we changed this later on. I will tell you it has a strict naming conventions. For example, the code should be self-explanatory with minimal need for um, comments. It's camel case. Uh, enforce every verse that gives us the ability to distinguish between Fortran intrinsics and uh, uh, the uh, user defined variables. Uh, uh, it also enables long variable names. Every function, so everything starts with a verb to specify that it's, it's an action that is being performed. Logical functions are start with ease. Um, scalar variables uh, start with lowercase. Arrays always start with uppercase. Uh, logical variables always read like a uh, proposition, English proposition. Um, core arrays always start with co underscore module variables start with module nd standing for module variable underscore so that they can be identified easily. Um, and then constants are always uppercase. So this is strictly enforced within the entire package. Uh, and then that enables us to write uh, something that we will see really nicely. So use uh, paramount module uh, only paramount type and then paramount object equals paramount type uh, giving this up. All right. Now we relax some of these because these, some of these were really too restrictive. For example, the uh, requirement for maximum line length. Um, the open core array uh, currently has full compiler support, so we had to move. Uh, for example, we cannot create DLLs that contain core array uh, code in it. Core array should be always main program. And then um, we relax also this um, convention because it creates incompatibility with template meta programming, which is used pervasively in this package. Now, here are the list of, pack, uh, list of features that are used in the, in the package, all from modern Fortran, Fortran 2003, 2008, and 2018. I'm not going to go through the details of it. Uh, this is the roadmap that we have for the package. Uh, currently, it, this algorithm is included. Uh, the other ones are partially implemented and will be soon released. This is what parallel tempering does. It tempers the objective function to compute the results. This is parallel nesting. Uh, nested sampling, it uh, starts integrating the function from the bottom to the top. It can be used for extremely complex objective functions that has uh, many modes in it. Um, that's how it does it. And then I want to mention a few things about the Fortran language itself. Uh, the core array interoperation, um, it would be great if uh, in a, maybe in a major, uh, in a next release of Fortran standard or uh, maybe the compilers uh, allow the use of CAF. Um, in DLL and shared object files. Also, um, the core array slicing is currently not available, which I think one of the, is one of the reasons why uh, we got so much performance kit in open core array, in, uh, core array implementation versus NPI. For example, this syntax is currently invalid, apparently, to my knowledge. Right? So there's no equivalent of NPI gather. Uh, it would be great if you have something like the Python um, module, uh, um, functionalities like use paramount SPN and then you can attach the object to the model so that uh, it enhances readability in the, in the code. And also uh, one, uh, one other feature that has been really problematic for our work was that um, optional arguments, if they're not available, you'll have to define uh, an alternative for that. And if we could have something like this, that you can use the uh, variable that doesn't exist, it would be fantastic. Again, this is like a Python environment. And then uh, I think a standard support for a minimal healthy subset of C4 country processing would be a fantastic to add. And of course, temporal of programming is essential. These are the list of missing things that I could, uh, could come to my mind um, that are missing right now in the Fortran language. Uh, just to summarize, Paramount is an open source with all these design goals in mind. Um, now, uh, the next major is gonna contain these routines uh, they are already partially implemented in the order specified here. And if you are interested in joining this effort and helping us uh, uh, writing this package extendedly to other languages, please email me or just uh, mention us on GitHub, uh, open an issue and so on. And we'll be more than happy to work with you. And it's not gonna be fruitless. Um, every work that we write, every work that we do is gonna end up as a publication at the end. With that, I want to thank you for your time, and I leave that uh, 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 I leave the stage for questions. Um, thank you very much for the presentation of this very vast uh, effort. I can say now um, there are not 
too many questions here. Um, a couple of remarks. Um, then let me ask a question. Um, what about users of your library? Uh, in what sense do you think? Um, well, when I hear library, I always think, okay, who's, I mean, you have shown a couple of, of cases. Yeah. Do you have uh, users? Uh, well, uh, as you see, it's gaining um, uh, momentum. Uh, it was released just uh, uh, two or three months ago, despite uh, having been developed for a long time, uh, since like 2011, but we decided to release it to the public um, just a few days ago. Uh, not a few days, I'm sorry, a few weeks ago. If you go to the release page, um, there is the release page. Yes. So you see that the, the first release was around uh, March 26. So we expect that hopefully once people understand and realize, and that's why I'm here, I want to introduce it at least to our, to our important community people, so that they don't need to go to TensorFlow or some other packages to do tasks that already natively are available in Fortran, as well as any other high level languages like MATLAB, uh, Python, um, and also C and C++ in Fortran. Um, so hopefully once we uh, have the words out, more and more people will be interested to get involved and to use this packet which is our purpose. Great, thank you very much. Um, and I forgot to say one last thing. I wanted to mention this first. This is me. If you're interested to know who am I, who's speaking right now, I was supposed to show you this first, uh, but this is me. I haven't changed much since taking this photo. Again, thank you very much. Thank you.